But it doesn't show the... Yeah, it will right now. Is Facebook messing with us? I like to have one. Okay. One or two. I'll put it in my car. We're going to call and get into order. Can I get one for these cars? Can I have one? It is now 622. Thank you all for coming. I like to put one at DeMarco's office. I'll mail it to him. I know his address. Okay. Our first order of business is we're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. And we're going to ask the veteran and birthday boy, Mr. Ismael Enriquez, to lead us to the pledge.
And walking in is our EPCC trustee. Who is that trustee? Is that you? <laughs> we have EPCC trustee Carmen Graham walking in. Did I miss anybody? Did I miss anybody? I know we have a candidate, Renee. Ruben. Ruben. I'm sorry. Ruben? We have the Oro Independent School District, Mr. Eddie Mena, walking in. Okay, anyone else? Did I miss anyone else? No? Okay, last but not least, I would like to introduce one of the best mayors El Paso has ever had. Yay! I'd like to introduce Such our honorable mayor, Oscar Liso. To get be a little bit, sorry. Thank you and good evening and thanks for being here. I um, what a great turnout. Uh, last time I, I went to uh, Democratic Party office, uh, Ms. Olguin introduced me and asked me to come and say a few words and I talked for like 15 minutes. And so I called Eddie and I said, Eddie, I said, I had somewhere to go or I should have talked a little longer and he goes, Mayor. He said, you were just supposed to say hi. He said, you weren't the keynote speaker. <laughs> And I go, well, tell the young, I'm sorry, I had to leave early, but, no, but uh, it, I get excited when, when I get an opportunity to, to talk to the people about Paso, and that, that was one of the things, and uh, I know you all, uh, that uh, before I get going, I know Pee Wee's passed out a couple of those uh, bumper stickers, and, uh, you know, I, I know, I don't know what she's charging, it's only supposed to be $2 each. So I'm, I'm not quite sure what PV is charging for, but uh, you know, um, I, I thank y'all for, for taking them. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's really a little bit early for, to run a campaign, but I wanted to get out there and let people know that uh, everywhere I went, people would walk up to me and say, why did you leave? Please come back. Uh, we'll support you. And when I first ran for office back in um, 2013, my wife and I decided that we wanted to go and run for office, and we talked about it for quite a while, that we wanted to represent 100% of the people, and that was really important. And uh, so, uh, I apologize to you have my back, but, uh, but uh, and, uh, Hello, there we go. Anyway, we went out there and it was just her and I. Her and I decided we were going to run for it. Chris Acosta, and she was wonderful. She really worked really hard to the three of us. We went out and after about 10 days, uh, we had signed up and we decided to have a couple fundraisers and raise some money. We still only had about four or five volunteers. And we were moving forward and trying to figure out really how you run a campaign. And we really didn't have an idea except that we knew that we wanted to go out and knock on doors and wanted to talk to people and really find out what made a difference in our community. And I can tell you that we ended up picking up momentum as every day went on. And we ended up with quite a few volunteers, but not until after the runoff. And we ended up taking about 75% of the vote with just a handful originally of volunteers. Today, I can tell you that we're still 16 months away, 17 months away, and I probably have a thousand people that have come up to me and said, we want to help you, we want to, we want you to represent us, we want to make sure that 100% of the people are represented again. And I think that we've seen a lot of the things that have been going on with our city, the expenses, the, the things that really we worked really hard to make sure we, we would get under control. And I think uh, Michelle Gein, Ms. Lamone, and uh, Ms. Costa will tell you that any time we voted on anything, and they heard me say this more than once, we always ask 100% of the people to pay taxes. So if we're gonna pass something, we need to make sure, number one, everybody in the city of El Paso can afford it. Number two, 
that make sure that it benefits everyone, it benefits the majority of our community. And it was really important, and we were able to do that. I, I was blessed with a great council, and I know that uh, people say, well, they argued a lot. And I said, well, I said, let me tell you why they argued it. And this is a true fact. I said, if there was a dollar available that was going to distribute it between two districts, I said, they didn't mind splitting it 50-50 amongst each other. I said, the deal was that one of them wanted to make sure they got the bigger half. <laughs> they did. And that's exactly, and I, I like that. I like that people had a passion for the district, passion to make sure that if we spend it one penny, it was a penny well spent or we were going to spend it. And um, we don't represent special interest groups. We represent 100% of the community. And that was really, really important to us. And um, when I got elected, our unemployment rate was a little bit over 9%, about 9.1. As you can see it today, which is, the, you see the jobs that are being created today, the companies that are coming in today, the companies that this great council, which is uh, three of them are here, that we really work together to bring companies to El Paso and earn their business to, to come to El Paso. Well, our unemployment rate is in the threes now, and that's a tribute to all the people that I had the great opportunity to work with. So how did we do it? We went out and we earned people's business, just like you do every day, whether anything you do, you gotta earn people's trust and people's business. So we traveled across the country, we, and I won't remember everywhere we went, but we went to New York, Chicago, San Francisco, Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, um, Washington, New, New, New York, New Jersey. And these are, a lot of them, what we first did was companies that had invested and trusted our community. Companies that had been here already and had an investment in El Paso. And we went over there and asked them, what can we do to continue to have your trust. What can we do to continue to help you grow within our community? And they literally told me that uh, a lot of them had been here 20, 30 years and never they had a mayor come talk to them and ask them what we can do for them. We weren't asking them for anything. We were asking them, what can we do for you? And as you can see, ADP ended up doubling up in El Paso. And ADP was a company that came to El Paso that uh, the prior in 2000 and in the late uh, 2010, 2007, somewhere that they, they came to El Paso and they were looking to double their footprint somewhere. So they bought some property in Augusta, Georgia, and they were getting ready to create great opportunities for the community in Augusta, Georgia. We went up there and we started talking to them and started talking to them about El Paso and the great community. Well, I can tell you that uh, they didn't have any property in El Paso, but within a year, they bought some property in El Paso, created over 1,200 new jobs and doubled their footprint in El Paso because we went out there to ask, what can we do for you? So the mayor of Juarez, Mayor Serrano and I started traveling because we had a lot of companies in Juarez and El Paso and he went with me to a lot of places. He and I walked into the door and they couldn't believe that it was two countries traveling together for the same common goal, which was our citizens and to create a better day and a better El Paso and a better Juarez. And um, one of the things that uh, we were that was very important to us, that, and, and we said this, that we weren't there to build walls, we were there to build relationships. And, and that really, we did that. We were able to do that. <laughs> you know, a lot of times we hear words, but those were actions. Those were things that we did. And. Um, I, um, I can tell you that our relationship from Mexico had never been any better. And the companies that came here would see that, and it was really important to them. Um, one of the things that, as we created jobs, and we brought companies to El Paso, and we lowered the unemployment, we, we actually retained a lot of jobs. It was really important that we didn't go ahead and get a company to come to El Paso that would affect somebody that trusted us and invested in us and we put them out of business. That was not the thing we wanted to do. We wanted to look at, because if you look at our community, and I'm not sure the exact number, but I would say over 80% of all the businesses in El Paso are small businesses. So we didn't want to put them out of business, but we wanted to enhance their business and continue to help them grow. So that's, we were able to do that by bringing companies set up. I got a, um, a quick story. Uh, Saturday, I was walking out of, uh, I went to the uh, children's uh, 
hospital gala and I'm walking out and this uh, young man comes up and he goes, uh, I sent you a text message, which I have, and the vice president of Prudential, which uh, she said she's retiring. And one of the things that was really important to her is that she wanted to come down and have breakfast with you and thank you for everything you've done for her team members and how you helped them establish El Paso. And that was really important because a week after I got out of office, I get a phone call and she flew down here and wanted to have breakfast with me to present me with an award that, uh, that, that she goes, we don't do this, but we wanted to give you something that meant a lot to us. And uh, something, and remember what I said, team members, their team members, their family members, those were El Pasoans. Those were people that were here in El Paso that were able to create an opportunity to create a job. And it's a good paying job with good benefits. One of the things when, when we create a job, if you didn't have, if you couldn't provide insurance, if you couldn't provide a future and education, we weren't going to offer you any opportunity to come to El Paso. You're more welcome to come, but you weren't going to get any incentives or anything from our community. And I can tell you that Prudential has been a great partner. Prudential has been hiring our veterans, and, and I think you've seen that. That was one of the biggest things that they wanted to do, to come to El Paso and hire our veterans, to give our veterans as they're getting out of the military and their spouses and their family members an opportunity to continue to grow. And um, they've done that. And Barbara's retiring uh, within the next couple of weeks, and she'll be here, I think, 17th of June. And the only reason she's coming is to say bye to her team members, which is our citizens of El Paso, and have breakfast with me. And say goodbye because our commitment, and we earn their trust in their business. So that, that's what we were able to do, whether it was Shrub or whoever it may have been that we created jobs. And it was really important. I think Mr. Costa will tell you, uh, Ms. Lamone will tell you, Mr. Olguin would say that we wouldn't offer incentives unless it was good paying job over household medium income, which is over $13 an hour now. And um, those are the opportunities we need. So we were able to do that. So someone asked me, and, and I, when, when I first decided to run for office, and I would get interviewed by all the TV stations, the newspaper, and they sit down with me and they'd say, um, Mr. Lisa, what is your platform? And I said, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and travel the country and I'm going to knock on doors and I'm going to try to earn someone's business. And they said, okay, and how many doors will that be? I said, it could be a thousand. I don't know. I said, but we'll go in there because you can't leave a brochure. You can't tell them how great it is and they don't know enough about El Paso unless you go out there. So the next day you read the headlines of the El Paso Times, and I'm sure all of you knew who 